Hi, Julie Torrens here. Well, I've got my Daniel Smith watercolors. They're messy looking, but they're great. Get whatever watercolors you have. And I'm working on my Amazon Basics. Can you see that? Amazon Basics watercolor paper. They call it a book. I would call it a pad of paper. And this is the 9 by 12, and it's 140 pound. It's a cellulose, meaning it's made out of wood pulp. However, for what we're doing, you just need something that's designed for to get wet. So I would have never guessed that I would be making what I think this is either video four, maybe, I think. But I'm working on my winter printables. I don't know, sometimes words just are so hard to come by. So I'm going to put on, we've got at least two layers on here. And I'm going to start up with layer number three on this selection. So I know I, I have you up close, so I can't show you what I'm using. But these are pretty much the colors that I'm working with variations but use like I said use the paint you have I'm not I'm I don't want to get all hung up on well what color are you using specifically because if you don't have a Daniel Smith colors I, I want you to use what you have because what you have is fine just just watercolor that's the most important thing all right let's get started on these blue flowers I'm going to go in with phthalo blue and the reason why is it's a darker and it is a little bit more towards um, maybe a teal color. And I'm going to put another round on these flowers and I'm going to go in between the already dark and I'm just going to make small petals just like this. So we've got three rows of flowers so my winter collection i don't want it to say christmas i've got a bubble of water on my ferrule on this black part and it'll come dripping down when you least expect it and you'll have a big old puddle of water so i didn't want this set to say christmas necessarily Although you certainly would be able to use this in making Christmas things, but I wanted it to be winter. Now, I don't know about you, but where I live, we have more winter weather as far as snow accumulation, more towards January, February, March. March, it's starting to slow down, but... I wanted this set to take you in further than New Year's. I'm just adding more, more phthalo to my palette. And I just want you to be able to see the response that I'm getting to this series is quite interesting to me, to tell you the truth. What makes it interesting is the number of people that are watching is down. But the n amount of time people are watching is up. So those who are watching are watching for for a long time. They're, they're watching the whole video. They're not just kind of shifting by it, scrolling past. So, you know, that's good to me. And then... The other thing is a lot more interaction. I'm getting a lot more responses. So that tells me that those that are watching are truly interested. And so that's why I'm here for you. It's not all about just the numbers as far as views, you know, 50 views, 100 views. I'm not getting the hundreds, but my the amount of time, the watch time hours 
is definitely going up. I'm just adding some more water to the paint I'm using because it's getting a little bit too, too gummy. So this one, the, these are shorter. And then as it comes closer to me, we're getting longer. Because that flower, instead of looking at it flat, we're kind of at an angle. So, you might be thinking, why flowers in winter? Well, believe it or not, at least here in Michigan, where I am in western Michigan, I can't speak for the, for the upper peninsula, we get... Uh, we get flowers coming up when there's still snow coming. And then the other thing I want you to kind of think about, all right, I'm going to go, I'm, I'm switching gears a little bit. I'm going to go lighter on these on the, towards the middle. So I've got sort of this, um, well, it's, it's wisteria is the name of this color. Mostly it's wisteria. And then I had added a little bit of what's called Rose of Ultramarine. But I'm going to add the Wisteria. And then I have White Gouache here. White Gouache, let me see if I can. White Gouache, it's a watercolor paint. But Gouache is not transparent. It is more um, opaque. And so it will lighten up these colors, but they will also be less transparent. So I'm using a really light, kind of a mauve color, and I'm going to make these smaller leaves lighter now, or petals, I should say, for the very towards the middle of these. And they're gonna reactivate the paint underneath a little bit, and that's okay. It'll just bring the color more towards the family that we've got here. I wanna get where you can see me. Yeah, so if you're looking at Watercolor purists, they would say to you, what this woman is doing is not watercolor. And technically, they're right. This is mixed media. Because I'm going to be using acrylic pens with this. I'm going to be using uh, black ink. And so... It is not just watercolor, period. So for the watercolor purists, and I don't say that in a, in a negative connotation at all, they're right. I do mixed media. But the bulk of what I'm doing, all of what you see on this particular page, is all watercolor so far. It's going to graduate up into more. But right this minute, it is watercolor. And I like it. So I was saying, when it comes to winter, first I want you to think about if you order flowers from a florist in the winter, they put flowers in that are not typically winter flowers that you're going to find in one of our Michigan gardens at the time. But it's the colors and you'll find the 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 pinks that are more towards magenta and blues and grays and pastels along with white. And so, you know, that's the kind of thing I'm sort of thinking of. I'm not using the as bright and bold as you might be used to. I'm going to add just a little bit of a lighter green. And again, I'm going now, this is a serpentine green that I'm digging into here. And I know you can't see my palette. You'll just have, well, it's not fair to say you have to trust me. So 
going into a serpentine green. This is a granulating color. It kind of will split off into greens and browns. I'm going to add white to it. And create kind of this creamy color. And I'm going to just, I'm just going to add a little bit here, there, here, there. Just little, little highlights of a lighter color. A little bit in the stem. Yeah. Just to add another layer of interest. A lot of layering is involved. A lot of times people think of layering when they think of acrylics or when they think of things like doing your gel plate and you're putting layer uh, master boards and you're putting layer on layer. Well, it's, this is kind of similar. I'm kind of pulling in darks and then pushing it back with lights just to just to give it a punch when you first look at something but then looking deeper you can see that there's more going on. I'm going to add a couple of leaves just out of this color. Why not? Leaves are something that I seem to tend to wish I had more of when I've cut these things out and I'm working on a project. I'm, I, it seems like I'm, I'm often, I'm going to turn this around. It seems like I'm often looking for more leaves to, to work with. I'm kind of just using up this paint that I have, but I like the opportunity to put some more leaves on. I sprayed this paper. And as I say, this is like number four in the series. So, you know, look for others if you're like, boy, I seem to be starting in the middle. Well, you kind of are. If, if this is your first look at this watercolor series of me working on my winter paintings. I'm going back into that serpentine green and I'm just going to add it to the spot that I have, but I'm not adding more white. There's there's still white in it, but it's going to be an, a whole other color again, which is fine. If you watch me use my printables, and what they are is, is they're just these watercolor or mixed media papers that I scan and then they get printed up. Once once I'm done handling them like I am right now, they're done. I don't put them on the computer and then do more to them. Now, PM Artist Studios is where I send them. And then PM Artist Studios does their magic to turn them from just scans into printable, downloadable sheets. I send them PDFs. They don't manipulate the art. They manipulate the, the uh, technology so that they can be printed up and, and that you can select them and purchase them and then you can print them up. But put a little one right in here. Sometimes you just wish you had a little leaf. There we go. Okay. This is good. I'm going to put some centers in these, all of them. And I think I'm going to go into my white gouache. I'll try to bring this up. I'm just getting a brush full of white gouache here, putting it right up here. And I'm just going to grab my cadmium yellow medium hue. And I didn't take much. So I've got a real pale yellow. Now this paint that I just put on, it's not particularly dry, but that's okay. And I'm just going to add some dots. 
Yep. See, and I, I, I picked up a little bit of the blue. That's all right. Because as I say, it's, it's dry to touch, but it's really not dry. Am I where you can see me? I hope so. I know you're probably sick of hearing me say that. Can you see me? Can you see me? But there's no point if you can't, right? Okay, I like that for the blue. Now I'm going to add more white to that yellow space. And I think, let me bring this back. I'm going to add a little bit of this uh, rhodonite, which is uh, in the pink family, just that little touch. And I'm going to put that in the middle of these. I've got no magic formula for how many dots, just random. There we go. Okay. Now, some of these leaves that I just put on, I'm going into that serpentine green and I'm just going to add again just a little just a little something how's that good i think mhm mm okay let's set this one over to dry and now grabbing another one remember this one I like this one. I like them all. Okay. So, where am I going to go with this? For these four, I'm going to, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I'm going to pull up some of that white. Pull up some of that white. I'm going to put it right into this wisteria color. good and I'm gonna add just a little bit Rosa Sharon oh I just said it that's not right it's rhodonite genuine okay and I'm grabbing a smaller brush I'm gonna use this one this one is a liner brush you can see when I get it wet I don't want to drip there it's very fine and I'm going to just put some lines in here just like that almost like a, a starburst so I'm pushing back the darker color adding light again if you want light you're going to have to have some dark in your work. When I was going left to right, I was going longer and then the up and down ones a little bit shorter to give it that arch. Now this one is kind of a straight at us. So I'm just adding kind of a haphazard starbursty pattern and there I like that okay these kind of lumpity bumpity looking things going back into the white using the liner brush and then just back into that color we were using and I'm going to give it some starbursts some Pretty aggressive starbursts. Yeah. Almost a cross hatching. Good.
good. This is becoming more transparent because there's more of the watercolor paint in this mixture than there was the white. So it's becoming more transparent, but that's okay. The same with these. You can almost not see it, but that's all right. I'm going to grab a bigger brush just to transfer more white. Let's go back to this. More white to this. And then back into the road night, just a little. Leave that go. I'm just scraping the brush to get as much of the paint off. Back to the liner brush. And I'm going to put a second layer of this. I'm going to get you back where I hope you can see. It's very dark today. It's, it's like 10 o'clock in the morning here. I'm not doing this at 5 in the evening like you might think. But it is dark. We're supposed to have rain all day and it looks like it's setting itself up for that. We've been having so much precipitation since uh, Halloween. Today is, oh, I don't know what the date is, around November. Let's see. The first, <laughs> let's count. The first was, it was Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So the second, third, fourth, fifth. today's the sixth, I think. If my finger math is right. Okay, and you can see it's sinking in. That's all right. I'm going to put another layer on here. Just a little bit. Mm-hmm. There. All right. Now I'm going to take some of this and I'm going to go into these little buds and just put a couple of lines in. I'm going to put it in the, the blue ones as well. There we go. Okay. Now, these green leaves. I'm going back to this brush, going back into that serpentine green that you've seen me use. And you can see I got kind of a dark highlight. This is particularly texture rich because I laid my hand in it by accident. I, I love it. I leave it. It's great. I'm going to go ahead and put a little more with just a line on one side. Just like that. Yep. Now I'm going to go with some water and I'm going to go on top. Yep. Just blur it out a little bit. And as it dries, it'll blur even more. Okay, I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. These need, am I picking up paint? These need a white punch. They're going to have to wait till they dry more. And these, it's time for dark again. So, but not yet. This needs to dry. You have to, you've got to figure in dry time in all these projects. Okay, now this one, our trees are done, but I've got these going on here. These and these, I think they're ready kind of for inking. I'm going to start out with my white Posca. Now this is a finer Posca. Uh, it's a 0 0.7 millimeter. So it's, it's pretty small and I'm going to put in, just giving it, I'm just pressing it here one time. Don't pound, pound, pound. Just, okay. I did it twice. That's good. I'm going to put in the veins.
And there we have that. Good, I like that. I'm gonna give it a few little white dots. Just because. Did I plan this? Nope, I'm just looking at it and kind of deciding what I want. Now these already have some uh, little white splatters, which is great. Okay, now I don't wanna drag my hand into this, so I'm gonna turn this around. And I'm going to add some, not with this, I'm going to get my jelly roll. And I'm just going to rub it on my paper towel here. And let's see, I don't even know if it's going to come out, but let's just see. Yep. Now, this jelly roll dries more white than you see it at the beginning. Mm hmm Yep. I like that. I like that. Let's give it a few white dots. I'm gonna, I just wiped it on my paper towel because it will pick up some of the paint on its little ball roller and then you get less of the white coming out okay i like those let's get now the black i use black sharpies a lot but when i'm doing and this is finer work i like the stetler and people were asking me more about the stetler it's a 0 0.5 it is a pigment liner it is waterproof on paper once it's dry. So I like to use this and I buy them uh, from Amazon. This was a package of five and they run about between, I would say 175 and 225 a piece, American dollars. So not bad. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this around. Posca dries faster than watercolor or regular acrylic. So I feel confident in using it. Now, if you drag this through wet acrylic, It'll work until you're done with that project. Then it's over. Because this is this little tip on here is made of, I believe, like a felt tip. And so it will absorb the acrylic paint. But when the acrylic paint is wet and the pigment is wet, it'll work. Then it'll quit. All right. So let's start outlining some of these. And I think this helps make them, I don't know, look a little more illustrative. But I think for the kind of work that I do and that I'm hoping you do, it, uh, I don't know, helps them stand out, I guess. Now, I'm not looking for perfection. If I'm a little inside, a little outside in my drawing, I don't care. Now you'll say, well, you seem to be getting it right where you want it or what that takes practice. That's all. Just practice so that what your brain has in mind transfers all the way down your arm, all the way down your wrist, and then comes out on the paper. Now these, I like to call these sprigs. They are heavier than if I was just painting a floral painting because you have to keep in mind, these are designed to cut out. So everything can't be just fiber fine. It's got to have some heft to it or else it will be impossible to cut out. All right. Now, didn't that make those stand out nice? I think so. All right, let's work on these. Oh, I went way out there. That's all right. All right, I'm going to kind of pick out 
some of those to sort of make some more in the front and some more in the back. Getting quiet, huh? So what about flowers here in Michigan in the winter? Well, we do have something that's called ice pansies, and maybe you have them where you live. People plant ice pansies when I would say the bulk of the snow is done, but not necessarily all. And you get them planted in a nice sunny spot, and they're they're pansy colored like the the purple and yellow yellow in this towards the center three main leaf or three main petals and then um once they're in if there's a frost or even a snow th the flower that's there will probably wilt but the plant itself will not die and it will reflower so that's that's one of the kinds that we have is is the ice pansies. All right, I'm going to put some little sticky out things, and that's going to be like um, butterfly antennas. You 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 may even just cut them off and draw your own in, but that's okay. And I'm just making some circles and lines for the ones that are facing us. It's like the little stamens. Yeah, I like that. That looks fine. I think I'm gonna leave these alone. I think they look good. Okay, my black tree, or black trees, my colory trees. I'm just going to take my black pen and just ever so little bit, add a little to the trunk. It's not a lot, very subtle, but I think it's going to add a little shadow here and there within them. So this is where this, well, this already is mixed media because it's acrylic paint on top of my watercolor, but it's just to add a little more something. It's kind of like when you're looking into the branches of a Christmas tree and there's little ornaments that you may not have realized at first were there. That's what's going to be, that, that's what's going on with this. Yep, I like it. It's not something that you're going to look at and say, look at her line work in those trees. No, but it's one of those things that adds to the whole picture. And you may not even ever notice that there's some line work in it. That's okay. Okay, there, good. Okay, these need more. I'm going to grab my finer white Posca. And I think I'm gonna add dots all around these innermost petal shapes that I drew. Yep, I like that. Kind of gives it a little bit of a lacy look. See, compare this one to that one. And this is where doodling practice comes in. 
when you get your 10 minute or less art journal that you've doodled in while you were waiting for something to come out of the microwave or maybe you were on the phone and you can just just doodle away and then when you get to a project like this those little doodle exercises really can pay off yep oh i like that i love these now i didn't hate them before but i really love them now i would say this page is done this if you order when this comes out and you order it, what you're seeing right here, and you've watched me work from the beginning to now, done. Sign it, and this one's going to be ready for going right onto the scanner and turning into some fussy cuts that you can do for your winter pictures. I think it's pretty. Let's go. Quit talking. Quit talking. Okay, so I've got this Stetler in my hand. Let's go back. Remember this one? Let's go back and work on this a little bit. And these two, to me, look done. Let's do a couple more just to kind of refresh our, our memory in this. So I'm going in and I'm going to put some circles sort of around the white dots that I made, but there may be a circle without a white dot. There may be a white dot without a circle. That's okay. And I'm going to make some ovals and lines for those little stamens. Few of them that are so straight up you can't see the lines. I like that. Let's do the outlining of some of these petals. Just like this. Just kind of picking out petals the way my eye sees them. And then I'm going to put some black lines. I like that. And let's do another one. And then I'm going to add some of the white to the dots back again. We also have here, they come up in March. And there can be all kinds of snow on the ground. All kinds of it. And you'll see poking straight up out of the snow little um what are they called crocuses i think so and they're yellow or purple and they kind of look like um a, a miniature tulip and they will come up if you've got them planted and they kind of are bulb like when you plant them those of you who are more avid gardeners than i've ever been We'll know for sure, but you know, I think they come up from kind of like bulbs and they are just beautiful and they're so refreshing to see when you can see them coming up out of the snow and the, I, they don't seem bothered by the snow. The closer to your house that you have them planted, the earlier they'll come up in the spring, but they are fun. All right. So can you see now the difference between like this one and this one? I hope so. Yep. All right. I'll do one of these little ones for you. Uh, let's see. Little ovals with stems. And then put some of these circles around the center and pick out some petals here I like that okay 
I'm going to grab the white Posca. And um, these few that we've just added, I'm going to go ahead and put a white dot in the black circles that I drew. Just to give it a little more definition. Same with this one. That pulls the center up towards us a little bit more. And this one. Just like that. All right. Whoop, drop the lid. Oh dear. Oh, Julie, what did you do? Oh, I see it, sorry. Oh dear. I'm reaching. I got it. If these didn't dry out so fast, I wouldn't have worried about it, but I don't want it to dry out. Okay, so this one is just going to need more of what you've already seen me do, but I'm not going to be adding any more paint. I'm not going to be adding any more splatters. I'm just going to finish these and these off the way that you see it. So I'm going to go ahead and sign this one. And you're going to see this one finished all off like you see these. Yep. So there you go. Put that on the almost finished pile. Let's bring this back. Okay, Stetler away. I like this. I think this is cute. I really do. All right, the flowers. I'm grabbing my... I'm going to grab the bigger one. Now, this one is... A, it, I don't understand this one. It says it's bullet shape, 0 0.9 to 1.3. I think it just has to do with maybe how, how much you press, you know, to that it can go kind of between. But we've got these heavier dots in here, and I'm just going to add, let's charge it. I thought I did, but I didn't. There we go. Some white dots within the colored dots that we did. Now this is acrylic, but it does dry faster than the acrylics that we pull out of a, a tube. Yep, I'm gonna do the same on the pink. Good. So, white, or no, purple or yellow little crocuses that come up in the winter and our ice pansies that kind of in the spring, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add some white dots to these leaves with the heavier of the two white Poscas that I have. I would say those are our main winter flowers. I'm not going to put white dots in these, at least not yet. But I am going to grab the dinner white and I'm going to add the veins. I don't want to smash my dots that I have. Adds a lot, I think. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, how about these? I'm going to turn this. So, again, I'm trying not to run my hand through white dots that I already have. I think I want some veins, not just a center line.
Now I think I got all those. All righty. Okay, let's just give these a moment to dry. And pulling up the last one that we're working on. All right, these. I want to work on those first. I'm grabbing the jelly roll. I shook it. You don't need to shake a jelly roll. <laughs> oh, even though it's raining, even though it's dreary and cold, I'm looking out over my lake or pond and I can see, um, oh, just a whole crew of ducks and geese out there enjoying life. It's so nice. I'm going to start with some circles, not dots, but circles around the flower center. And I'm just sort of establishing where the center is. I don't know if you can see all the texture of the different layers that we did on these, but it's there. Okay, now I'm going to take this one and I'm going to just kind of loop up these. Nothing real exact at all. Good. I'm going to, I just rub the tip to get whatever pain it might be picking up. Good. I like that. Yep. Okay. I'm going to grab the smaller Pasca. I'm going to add some white dots around the, the blue part. These are really whimsical, and I like them. I think these could have a really nice effect in a junk journal or on a card. Now you would definitely, if you want this on a winter card, you'd be wanting to add some of the pine cones and greenery and just blend this in with those things. I think that would look really pretty. And with some of the other flowers. Definitely. All right. Let that dry a little bit. I'm going to go ahead with this narrow uh, Pasca. I'm going to charge it again. And I'm just going to add veins. charge it. Good. Very good. Okay, these. I'm going to... Mm, not white. Nope. I'm going to use black. I'm going to get the stetler out. And I'm going to find the centers on these. And yep, it's just dots. I'm going to go around twice. Yep, can you see that? There they are. Yep, that's good. Yes. I'm making this one almost kidney shape. I like that. I just think these needed a punch of black. Mm 
again I'm making kind of a kind of a kidney bean shape yep the more dots the more I like it I'm gonna go around this one again one more Yep. Very good. This one needs more. See, I'm I'm liking it. The more I add, the more I'm liking it. Do you know that we're almost out of time? Can you believe it? I can't. Giving these another row of black and Oh, Julie, this is getting so boring. Well, I'm not bored, but this is the way these projects go. Nothing fast about it. There we go. All righty. I'm going to add some black to these. I'm going to add some black dots, random. I guess they're kind of more ovally shaped. Both. Some ovals, some dots. Good. I'm going to put some... This one didn't get white dots around him. I'm looking at him thinking, he just doesn't quite look the same. Were you telling me that? Were you telling me you missed one, girl? Well, that's the way I am sometimes. Okay. I'm going to be a little more careful with that one when it comes to this, but I'm just going to add some black lines coming up the petals like creases, like little folds. Love it. This is the one I want to be careful of. I don't want to drag this through that wet Posca. There we go. Okay. Oh, I really like those. They're very, very whimsical. I think they're gorgeous. Let's do a couple of leaves here. If you're hearing different kind of squeaky noises and stuff, it's because it is windy. Or I guess I should say breezy. Not really windy. Yep, breezy. One more. No oh, voices outside. Okay. I think you get the idea of those. These have been kind of neglected. These are the little buds. Let's go back to watercolor. Yeah. In true mixed media style, I've got this serpentine green that I'm just re-wetting right here. And I'm gonna add some Cascade Green. Don't know why, just am. Darken it. I did have to, dark I wanted that in my mind. I had that in my mind to darken it. And I'm gonna just put some, some greenery around these buds. Yep. That 
Doesn't that just add a lot? I think it does. Maybe this bud is the least open of all of them. Good. Yeah, I like that. Now, this one is not going to be signed. This one is definitely not done. But let's just kind of recap of where we are. So this is the last one that we've worked on. This is going to get some more. These, I think, are pretty much done. These four leaves done. These need uh, mostly just uh, pen, pen work. So we'll, we'll have that. And now let's bring up the other ones that we've worked on. So this one, I started even before I started this series. But mostly we've been just doing the, the final, final rows on that one, the final layers. So that one's good. This one we worked on from the get-go. Needs pen work, but I, I'm not going to be adding any more watercolor to this. Just pen work on here. And this one is done. Oh, one more. This one? Oh, we, this was the last one that we did. Okay, so we've looked at them all. I want to thank you so much. You've been here a good long time. Go ahead and hit the thumbs up subscribe, leave me some comments. Let me know how you're feeling about these uh, watercolor sets. I'm going to be finishing this setup and I'll let you know when it is ready to, on PM Artist Studios to pick up on your own. Thanks so much. I'll see you in another video. Bye now.